Ilya Zoris is a Greek professional basketball coach who lastly managed Paris Thierry of the Greek Basketball League before taking on full-time coaching duties with the Georgian national team. Zoros has gone through top-level European benches such as EuroLeague teams Olympiakos and Zalgiris. Coach Zoros has also been the Greek national team head coach. As a coach, he has won the Lebanese League Championship, the FIBA Asia Cup Championship, Lithuanian Cup winner, Baltic League Championship, the Lithuanian League Championship, and has also been named Euro Cup Coach of the Year. Coach Zeros, welcome to the podcast. Uh, welcome. Thanks a lot. Uh, greetings, first of all, from uh, Greece. I'm uh, very happy being here with you and uh, share my ideas. Um, and I would like to thank every, everyone about uh, coming and listening all these uh, ideas that we're going to use and uh, the time that we're going to spend together. Well, thank you. Uh, you've been in the game for a long time. You've, you've coached at a lot, of, a lot of levels and had a lot of success. And uh, I'm curious, maybe just now as a start, uh, to get your ideas on what's the difference between being a full-time national team head coach, which you are now for Georgia, versus being a full-time team coach? Um, first of all, I will say that uh, it's really uh, a, a totally different uh, job. Uh, I'm coaching uh, the last uh, five years and a half in the Georgian national team. I'm the coach of Georgian national team. Plus, I was for two years the coach of Greek national team. Uh, I've been working for 35 years in, in, in basketball. And um, I will say that um, being a coach of a national team, it's uh, really hard because you cannot establish your philosophy. Uh, why? Uh, the why is that uh, the players uh, normally they play in their teams and actually the last years with the windows that they use, uh, they call windows, uh, the, the, the weeks which we have the obligations, uh, we know that uh, you have to teach basketball, I mean to remind them the place actually for two or three days and then immediately to play and uh, sometimes we have to travel in between these week. Uh, due to coronavirus, of course, uh, it was a big uh, problem to everybody. So we used to do the bubbles as uh, NBA show us, you know, the way. And uh, we, we go to a place where all the teams we practice together, we play. But um, really, it's uh, hard to be a coach of a national team. Uh, when you have obligations during summer, for example, next year that we have uh, the Eurobasket, if everything goes well, of course, uh, concerning the virus, uh, it's much easier because uh, at that time you can practice uh, for a month or approximately a month, and then uh, you can um, uh, make the team gel. You can uh, establish the defense, uh, defensive ideas that you have, uh, the offense that you like to play, and uh, you can play some friendly games. You can prepare the team much better than uh, during uh, the winter. When you are a coach in a team, uh, is different because, first of all, you can choose players. So you can do a recruiting and you can find the best players that uh, can fit to your system. Uh, you can... Um, have your uh, uh, coaching staff. You can uh, have the players for the whole season. It means that uh, uh, you're going to play uh, a lot of games during the season. So uh, as we know in our job performance counts, so <laughs> you're going to have uh, bad results with the team, uh, but you're going to have also uh, good uh, results. So you can have a balance and you can... Uh, uh, be focused in your job and be prepared uh, to play the best uh, basketball that you can at the end of the season, where we know very well that, uh, you know, the playoffs are starting and uh, everybody is competing for the title. So it's something totally different. Uh, unfortunately, this year for myself, uh, uh, I had, um, you know, some discussions with the uh, Spanish team. And we know that uh, there, there is, um, uh, you know, um, 
I will say a close that nobody can be a coach in a national team and at the same time be a coach in a Spanish team in ACB. And uh, as we are preparing our team uh, for the Eurobasket and uh, next winter also, we're going to have uh, qualification games uh, uh, for the World Championship. Uh, I, I choose the, not to even to negotiate and not even to talk uh, even. Um, my dream was uh, to be in uh, ACB, one of the strongest leagues in, in Europe. Uh, that's why I started to study also Spanish and uh, I'm trying to be prepared to go there. <laughs> well, it's, it's well documented, coaches, that, uh, that Google, you see that, that uh, you, you had a chance to go to the Spanish league. And, you, and it's the Spanish league that does not allow coaches to be a national team head coach and a team coach in their league at the same time. It's the Spanish team rule just to let people know, but uh, yes. coach, we're going to get into some defense and uh, use your vast experience through years of basketball and coaching multiple levels and multiple teams and uh, get down to it. But uh, I know a lot of it, when I started researching you, a lot of it starts with this strong arm defense. Can you give us first a little bit of an overview of your philosophy? Yes. Uh, first of all, um, I will say that uh, it was uh, a, a coach who inspired me and uh, a coach who uh, we are talking very long time. Uh, his name is Ted Rodopoulos. This coach is traveling to the States the last 30 years. And um, I got a lot of stuff from, from him, uh, especially when I was much younger. So once he told me that uh, he had an idea, it was a great player here in Greece. His name uh, is uh, Nick Gallis. He played. He was playing in Seton Hall. In, uh, he came in Greece. He made a huge uh, career. He played in the national team. He played in Aris of Salonika. He moved to Panathinaikos. So uh, it was, you know, very difficult to stop uh, a player with uh, this uh, talent. He created, uh, you know, by himself a defense where he was trying because he was extremely strong with his right hand and he was trying to avoid him to go to the right side. So we, we start to talk about that. And um, uh, after a lot of conversations, he told me that you can try by yourself to, to see how it works uh, and you, you can create, you know, the, the, the whole difference. I gave you an idea and then you, you can start to, to, to make experiments, I will say, with your team. Uh, it was the best timing for me because I left from Olympiakos and I went to work in Lebanon, in the top team in Lebanon, uh, suggests. And um, for me, first of all, uh, it was <laughs> really... A difficult moment moving outside of Greece from top level uh, Euroleague team to go to uh, to Lebanon, but I was extremely happy because I practice a lot this strong hand defense, and our team won the Cup of Champions in Asia, became the first uh, team in Asia, uh, won the championship also there the cup. So uh, it really uh, gave me you know, the time and the space to work all this stuff. And then when I came back in Europe, I use it almost in all my teams. And um, the philosophy is uh, that all the players all over the world, uh, even in the NBA, because I've been many times in the States uh, following uh, many programs um, uh, from Coach Popovich, uh, from Coach Quinn Snyder, Coach Bad. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, big, big names, even from the past, Hubie Brown. Uh, so I will say that uh, when I was there, I realized that all the players, they have uh, some habits. When we, we talk about strong hands, strong arm, as you used uh, to say, um, doesn't mean that is uh, the right hand because the player is, likes, uh, for example, is right handed, but he likes to do everything maybe with the left hand. And I will give you an example. Uh, we were playing against the uh, Serbia national team. Uh, Teodosic, who is uh, a player who played also in the NBA and one of the top names in, in Europe, 
was using mostly his left hand to, to, to make the first dribbles, to make the passes, to score, to shoot the threes. So for us, we count that player as a lefty and not as a right hand player. Because uh, even if he's dribbling with the right, he's shooting with the right hand. For us, he was a lefty. So when we start and we prepare our defense, we uh, work a lot, you know, of course, with drills, uh, how the players, they have to defend on the middle of the court, on the right side, on the left side of the court, because it's really, um, I will say, difficult, you know, to, to, to get the habit and not to get beaten uh, like this, because uh, most of the players, they open either the front, front, feet, the, uh, front foot, because it's, it's very difficult to keep the front foot uh, all the time uh, uh, denying that side. Or the biggest mistake, especially in the very beginning, is when they open the back foot and they give a straight drive to the basket. Uh, so we start, uh, I'm talking all the time, but I don't know, I hope that... Uh, it's it's all good, Coach. I'll idea. ask questions, yeah. Yes. Uh, I guess <laughs> let's just start here, Coach. First part is that uh, like strong... So basically, in, in a lot of North American programs, uh, they talk about force weak. This is the same thing you're talking about taking away the strong arm of the player, whether it's their left or the right, based on scattering report. And then yes. you're talking about stance, which is obviously the most important part is to not be too open. So can you yes. dive into that? Talk about, say, if you're forcing uh, to the baseline because their strong hand is going to the middle. Can you talk about the stance there first? Yes. Uh, before starting and explaining that, I will tell you something. Uh, we work together with a uh, great uh, coach and great uh, character, Kenny Atkinson. Mm -hmm. Kenny Atkinson, we work together. I was a coach in Paris, in Paris Racing at that time, and we were together before he left to work in uh, Houston Rockets. And from there, as we know, his um, career, he moved, he became the head coach in Brooklyn Nets, uh, on Clippers now, uh, just read that he moved to, to the um, Warriors. Uh, so what uh, I would like to say is that through the discussions that we had, and uh, when you start to talk with uh, many coaches, of course, uh, you can improve yourself, you can find new ideas, because uh, for me at the beginning, it was very hard. After talking with Kenny, we tried to find which was the best way to do it. And um, uh, when you, you, you exchange ideas, you can find the best way for your team and personally for yourself. Now, most of the teams, I can answer the question, they like to force the ball to the baseline. So they keep the ball uh, to the side. Uh, this doesn't mean that you don't play strong hands. I will explain something. When we play the ball live, when we play one-on-one, -on -one, wherever the player is, we don't give him to, to, to drive against us with a strong hand. If it's the right hand, uh, and uh, this is to the right side of the court, it means that we force to the middle but not exactly to the middle. The checkpoint is to go a little bit like a semicircle, to go over uh, a space and, and somebody else with a stand position or somebody else who is in that area can help us uh, during this drive. First idea, not to get beaten in the first two dribbles. First two dribbles, we have to be extremely strong. This is what we teach our players for offense and for defense. So you, you have to beat the players in the first two dribbles and you don't have to, to, to get beaten in the first two dribbles. Then, because a lot of people are confused with the show hand defense and with the pick and roll defense. Because uh, sometimes they say, hey coach, on the right side, we force the ball actually, I will say to the middle, not exactly to the middle, yeah, we understand but, that. Uh, but uh, a pick and roll is coming. And uh, then what are we supposed to do with our big? 
because uh, maybe we have a seven footer who cannot uh, be very aggressive, we cannot go out. So at that time, uh, we use, for example, uh, I don't know, some teams they use colors, we call blue, it means uh, eyes, it means uh, side, I don't know, you know, there is a different terminology. Yeah. So very often, uh, we explain to the players that the strong hand defense, the one-on-one -on -one defense, supposed to be, you know, uh, and we're supposed to be very uh, dedicated and ready to play, not to give the strong hand. After we make decision about the pick and roll defense. So sometimes when the team is together for a long time, we can establish even on the pick and roll, the strong hand defense. It means the pick and roll is taking place to the right uh, side of the court. There, we can play, for example, a hard hedge or something like that. Pick and roll is taking place to the left side of the court. There, we can ice or we can be a little bit more aggressive and bring the big guy higher uh, because it depends, of course, of, on the characteristics of the players that we have. Some players can play defense high, so we can use them to play aggressive defense. Sometimes they cannot defend high, and then we, we ask and we demand from the guards to, to be more aggressive and the bigs to, to sag, to be a little bit uh, back one, two steps and protect a little bit more the space. Let me just let me just again summarize that because this is great stuff and I love yes. this. So on on the right side, if you're uh, uh, again forcing strong hand, you're forcing to the middle, not exactly as we said to the checkpoint. Yes. And on that side of the floor, we can have a different ball screen coverage because the defender's feet are already forcing the ball middle, so it's going to be a head shock. On the other side of the floor, since we're already forcing baseline. It's theoretically, we're already forcing to the baseline. So it's an ice type of coverage. And exactly. Uh, yeah. Exactly. But, but the challenge is when you change whether a lefty or righty, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. But uh, I, I would like to say that only if we follow the strong hand defense also on, uh, on the pick and rolls, because uh, in the beginning, uh, I would like the most important is the players to learn the one-on-one. -on -one. After, when they get better, we can start to move on and we can start to make decisions. Pick and roll. Uh, the players can learn because we need to start to talk. We need the big guys to talk. Uh, they can call eyes, even they are in the right side of the court. And then the player needs immediately during, uh, you know, the one-on-one the -on -one defense, to be ready to turn him and force him to the baseline. So that's why I, I, I make and I explain that there is a big difference if we follow the strong hand defense also do, uh, in the game, also in every pick and roll defense, also in the, uh, in the screens, because uh, it's totally different when you defend a, 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 a down screen, for example, on, on zipper, how you defend the player to keep him to that side and how you defend him uh, because there is a pick and roll immediately after on zipper and how you defend him when there is no uh, pick and roll action. Uh, so I will say it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, I believe that we need uh, more hours to, to do, you know, to explain all that. Of course. But uh, uh, for me, the main thing is one-on-one -on -one to stop a player, you need to be, uh, uh, I will say, ready to stop the strong hand. Most of the players, they have the tendency to, to attack immediately with a strong hand. And then it's uh, very difficult, even you do a great uh, teamwork, to stop a player uh, shooting, driving, passing with a strong hand. Uh, this is the main reason why we, we, uh, I choose to use this type of defense with, um, I will say, big success all over the years. And even some people, they didn't believe in the top level. For example, in Europe, is EuroLeague the top level, that it would work. I did it with my teams, and we had uh, some very good results. 
It, it's great stuff. And uh, I love talking about this. And uh, you've mentioned one on one a few times. So I want to dive into some of those teaching points. Because especially you say something that I totally agree with. And it's we're not drop stepping, we're not opening up, uh, opening up, we're first jumping back, because the yeah. goal is to keep the ball in front. Can you talk about that? Because I think that's a yes. huge teaching point too many people miss. Yes. Uh, the first thing is when we start and we do the drills, uh, you know, for one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the players, they have to learn that uh, whenever the player is receiving the ball, is in a triple threat position. We have, for example, the left uh, foot front because he is, most of the players are right-handed and, um, and uh, the right foot back. But actually, we're in a position like uh, a boxer. Uh, uh, we are ready with the hands, ready if the player will bring the ball up, ready to contest with the left hand up. And this is uh, one thing that is very, very important in our defense. Um, we demand of our, our players to contest the shots. How they contest the shots? If we leave the players alone and we ask one player, please, when he gets the ball, contest the shot. What they do? Most of the players, they shoot with the right hand. And most of the defenders, they try to contest the shot with the right hand. So they cannot contest the shot. They really cannot contest the shot because uh, opposite of the right hand of the shooter is the left hand of the defender. So it's, it's uh, I will say, important to learn Right hand player shooter, left hand is contesting, you know, the, the, the shoot. Now, next step for the offensive player when we teach is a fake. So we try to fake to drive to the strong side to, to the strong with a strong hand. And what we teach is a small jump back with two feet. Uh, there, of course, there are many techniques. Other uh, coaches, they will like to move first the back foot and then the front foot. I prefer and I believe that it's a little bit faster to move back with two, with a small jump, very small jump back. Uh, so uh, you create the distance with the offensive player because at that time he's bringing the ball down. So it means he's not ready to shoot. So you, you make a small step back and immediately you are ready to cover uh, this, uh, this attack, this drive. When he brings the ball back again on triple threat position, the players, again, they do a small jump uh, front and they are in the right position. Is the way how we teach in the very beginning. So they go, they defend with a show hand, a small fake to the right uh, side, a small uh, jump back. Again, they bring the ball uh, high. Immediately they come up and then we continue with passes or whatever. So, so many things there, obviously, in terms of the detail. And I, and I love that. And uh, the other thing that you very much emphasize throughout this whole defense in this one-on-one -on -one is the arm position, which you talked about relative to that but particularly your front arm that puts constant pressure on the ball, right? Of course, the front arm is putting pressure. Uh, many players, they like, you know, to sweep the ball, to, to attack to the strong hands, so you have to be ready. Uh, many players, they like to do the crossover step, so you are uh, crossover dribble, you are ready to steal the ball. Many players, uh, they are ready immediately to make a pass, so with the front arm, you are ready to, to, to make a deflection. And um, we emphasize that. And as I said, uh, the most important, many players, they are ready to shoot. They get the ball and they're ready to shoot because uh, after the one-on-one -on -one with ball live, we teach the players the closeout defense. And uh, during the closeout defense, they have again to be ready uh, with the uh, left hand, uh, left arm up immediately. First is to contest the shot if they are great uh, shooters, and then uh, to be ready to, to, to avoid the drive to the strong hand. Because everybody is supporting, and this is what they have to understand, is supporting to the weak hand. Uh, because uh, this is the way how we teach the five on five. 
they know that everybody can is obliged, I will say, to jump and to cover the weak hands. We play team defense, one on one, of course, but at the same time, when I'm guarding my men, I'm guarding one man and a half. I'm guarding my men, and uh, the the half is to support my teammate. So in the, in in any drive, all the players are supposed to be ready. We we need to play team defense. So we're you're getting into there as your one pass away help, and your one pa- pass away help is loaded towards defending the weak hand drive because the ball shouldn't go strong hand, right? Yes. And uh, some uh, coaches, uh, they will say, but coach, how can you deny the ball when you are one uh, pass away? Because when uh, most of the teams and most of the coaches, they like to deny, uh, at that time, when there is a drive, they need to, to, to open to the ball and then try to help. So what I would like is actually to play a defense which we call open deny defense. What does it mean? Mostly we are with, uh, I will say, chest to the ball uh, when I'm uh, on the one hand uh, distance, one pass distance from the ball and with the hand which is closest to the man who we defend, we try sometimes to use, I will say, um, uh, the, the palm to be on the, the ready on the ball and ready to make the deflection. So we, we discourage the pass with the open stance of deny. We play deny with open stance. Why? Because we are ready, first of all, to show to the offensive player that immediately there is a help, that somebody is ready when they make the first dribble to attack uh, with, uh, with the other hand. And at the same time, we can make a deflection with the uh, closest hand to our uh, opponent to make the deflection. And we use these drills a lot in the very beginning uh, uh, when we use um, uh, show hands, we, we can use the next player and is ready every time when there is a drag, when there is a dribble, to use the fake and immediately with the other hand ready for the deflection. So they learn how to use the hands, how to support, how to be close and how to make confident the player who is defending the ball. Because if he feels that he has support, he can be more aggressive. And you know very well sometimes where there is no team defense, when there is no support, the players immediately, they give up. They are not so aggressive because uh, once the opponent is beating them uh, strong and uh, can use a, a strong drive to the basket and there is no support, immediately they were gonna uh, step back. They're gonna make, you know, um, I will say they're gonna play uh, uh, the defense that we don't like as a team. What does it mean? No pressure on the ball. When you play strong hand defense, you need to pressure the ball and you need not to give the strong hand. Everybody else is ready. With a weaker hand, you can play better defense because everybody is ready and they will not make good decisions, of course. Now, coaches, uh, Dave Smart in Canada, if you've heard that name or not, has done force weekend defense and probably adopted some of these ideas from you over the years. But one of the reasons he forces weekend is not because of dribbling problems, but because of passing problems. Players have a harder time going to their weekend and passing it off their weekend side. Is that similar to why you originally adopted this idea? I will say that uh, this is uh, uh, something that is, I will say is true. But um, why we teach that? We try to force the players to go to the uncomfortable zone, to move to the, 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 to the site which they don't like. You can see that many players, top players in the top leagues, they have some habits. They have some moves, some specific moves, which 
they use all the time during the games. So uh, what we have to do is to force them to do something that they don't like. To force them, if, for example, you, you force him to the left side, immediately he has to make a pass with the left hand. Maybe he's not used to make this pass. Maybe he doesn't like to do that because uh, going to the left side is something that he doesn't do during the, his practices, during uh, the games that he played in the past. So we need to force him to do something that he doesn't like, something that he doesn't feel comfortable. This is the way how, why, and this is the, 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 the way that we, we built, I will say, this kind of defense. And of course, every time we try to find, you know, the weaknesses, because you know very well that uh, in every defense, there are, you know, uh, strong points and uh, weak points. There are things that you need to correct. Uh, there are things that you, you and you need to improve this. Uh, at the same time, the players, uh, when they feel comfortable, then everything is easy. Uh, I will tell you my experience with many teams in the very beginning. I practice it a lot and I don't use it during the first games. Why? Because uh, I am a strong believer that when the players will try to do it, you have to be 100% ready and then you're going to have success. Then they're going to start to believe to themselves and they're going to start to believe to this, this kind of difference. Uh, because it seems uh, very difficult in the very beginning to tell them that, you know, the players, they like, uh, they have strong hands. A coach, they say immediately, uh, the good players, they have both uh, the hands. They use right and left very easily. Yes, but they have habits. They like to dribble with the left hand and make threes. So if this player is scoring uh, five, ten threes per game, what are we supposed to do here? Even he is a right-handed player, and if he, is go he can go to the board, to the baskets with a strong drive, you know, and score uh, two easy baskets. Then what do we have to do? We have to stop the, the three-point game. So what? We consider him as a lefty. We stop the left hand. We force him right. And we, we let him score one or two easy right hand uh, baskets, layups. Sometimes, of course, somebody can block this shot. But if not, at least we stop him of scoring 15 points and he scored two or four points with two layups. It's a totally different game. So a few things come up there. Uh, first, you just mentioned that. So let's go through that. So on your scouting report, how are you communicating to your players where you're forcing an opponent player? Are you calling it a left or a right? Or are you calling it a, how are you communicating it? Yes. Uh, we do a lot of job, uh, especially the, all the staff, all the assistant coaches, they need to work a lot to check and to know um, the individual stuff about every player. Uh, is he a right-handed? As we said, I repeat one more time, can be a player who is right-handed, but he do everything with the left. So for us, he's left-handed. So when we do all the scouting and we finish, uh, when we start practicing about the next game, we don't say anything else except who is lefty, nothing else. So the players, the, the teams that uh, we, we, we play, they have, for example, one player lefty, two players lefties. So we say number seven, number 15 are lefties. So everybody, because the bigs, they have to know, uh, if we play strong hand uh, defense uh, on the pick and roll, if we play uh, defense, on, or as we said before, on the down screens, they have to know where we force, the player because he is lefty. We switch during the game. We get in trouble. They play. Uh, they score a lot through you know the pick and roll actions, and we made decision to switch with the uh, four men. We switch a lot because we know very well that mostly the four men are very athletic. So what we do? They need to know who is lefty. So all the team knows that these two or three players are lefties. And in the very beginning, when you start to establish this defense, 
you use colors. So for example, the orange color will be the two lefties. So they start to understand that these two players are different than the others. After a while, we have to remember with the numbers, who is the lefty, and we have to be ready to play opposite. And uh, that's why during our practices, uh, of course, in the first practices, we force everybody, for example, to the left hand. But after a while, everybody is forcing uh, at least one or two times to the other side, because we're going to face also a lot of lefties, and they have to get used on that. I just want to emphasize because you said something again that's it's it's really really logical and really smart and it's based on learning science and this concept of guidance where you have the players wear the orange jerseys initially because there's a visual as well as you know what's going to become less of a visual because you're going to remove the orange jerseys and that's the important part of it is initially they get an idea and for coaches considering teaching this at youth or high school levels it's such a great way to be able to start the foundation the other thing mm -hmm. i want to say is that and re-emphasize is that you assume everyone's right-handed unless you tell them otherwise so they don't have to think about whether they're left or right they only have to think whether they're left right exactly exactly this is exactly the point where we emphasize we talk and we say in the team which we play, they have one lefty, two lefties, we give the numbers and everybody is prepared for that. So uh, also on the scouting reports, we give uh, some instructions, uh, for example, uh, good shooters, good three point shooters, uh, but free throw players. So they know some small details and uh, we would like to give a little bit more information about the lefties. Uh, if uh, they shoot threes or they don't. Why? Because um, uh, at that time, then we know if we need to force them to go strong to the basket uh, or we have, uh, you know, to, to, to be one or two steps back. This is a part of the scouting uh, that uh, the coaches are doing. And um, especially in Europe, uh, not only in our team, they use a lot, uh, you know, the... the uh, scouting, they use a lot of the small details, they have enough time. Of course, there are different philosophies. There are coaches who they defend the place. It means uh, they know that uh, this place is called one, two, fist, uh, head, whatever. And they teach how they're going to defend that. Um, I don't believe so much on that as a coach of national team. Uh, I mean, the last years, I believe that you have, you need to have a philosophy. So we say how we defend the pick and rolls, uh, the middle pick and rolls, the side pick and rolls with the team that we have. And if we change something for one game or with against one player or uh, in a combination of one player and one big that they are very dangerous, then uh, we can say that, for example, in that game, we're going to play black. Uh, it means a trap or something else. And the players, they get used on that. So they don't have to think a lot because I believe uh, the more you think, the less you run, the less you react. So you need to have habits. And uh, when you have habits, everything comes faster and you don't uh, need you know, to think so much so you can play uh, faster and be more aggressive. So to me, this is logical as well, because if you or I to play one-on-one -on -one in the playground against each other, yeah. my thought immediately would be to take away your advantage, which is to take away your dominant hand, right? So yes. I'm curious, like this resonates with most players, but they're not used to playing this type of system is what you're saying. For sure, they are not used, but I will tell you something. Uh, you know, I was also coaching with the, in the youth categories. We won two times. The, we were champions in Greece and defeated two times. I will say that uh, in the younger ages, it's, uh, it's, the result is uh, unbelievable. It's amazing. Uh, I was following sometimes also watching, you know, the uh, college basketball uh, sometimes uh, women's basketball were, were, if you can establish this kind of defense, I believe that you're going to have huge success. Why? Uh, most of the players there, 
because they are not in the top level, they are not uh, professionals, I will say players of the NBA or in EuroLeague, where, uh, of course, uh, you need to, 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 to have um, better skills, you need to, to be, I will say, a player who will uh, work more on the, on the weak uh, points that you have. Uh, uh, the results in, in these, uh, you know, areas, in these uh, categories is uh, huge, is, is, is unbelievable. And uh, I, I made this even with my son. Uh, I have a son, uh, eight, 10 years old. And uh, sometimes when he was defending, uh, you know, in the playground with uh, some friends, you know, playing, I say, try to keep him to the left side. Don't give him the right. Even sometimes give him the straight drive to the, to the basket with the left. No problem, but don't give him to go to the right side. Uh, it was unbelievable, the result after a few days. Uh, most of the players, they couldn't beat him on the right side. And then I explained to him, that's why you have now to learn to play with <laughs> also the left hand, with the left layups, with the left hand passes, with the left hand to do everything. Uh, it, it's it's uh, it's unbelievable the result that you can get from from this kind of defense. Well, I'm glad you connected that because it's true that this is this is one of the best offensive player development defenses to play, right? Because your team is going to get better on offense, developing their weaknesses because your defense is designed to take away their strength. Exactly. This is uh, something that, because when you teach defense, at the same time, you teach offense. <laughs> you teach them to understand how, you know, they have to attack when they're going to face something. Because uh, sometimes we say, this defense is very effective. But what if this happened to us? <laughs> how are we going to play against that? Uh, I remember once we were trying to establish a defense, uh, a zone defense, 2-1-2. Uh, two forcing the ball in, in, in inside, not giving the passes, denying the passes to the wings. And having, uh, at that time I had Marjanovic, who is playing in the NBA, Boban was in the middle, <laughs> huge body, uh, weak uh, at that time, you know, very young with us in Jalgris. And we won the championship. We didn't allow the passes to the wing. Uh, uh, Boban was waiting in the middle. We were forcing everybody to go inside and Boban was ready to make uh, blocks. He didn't allow any drive inside. We were covering, I will say, the, the paint with the back players, uh, with the two forwards. And uh, we had huge success. And I say, great, we won the championship. And once I was in Turkey, <laughs> I went to play against the team. And at that time, they used the same defense that I used. And I was very surprised because I didn't teach my players how to attack this kind of defense because we were working uh, with uh, this defense. So the players, they get used in the, when I was in Jalgris, they get used how to attack this type of defense. But when I moved to Turkey, I didn't use this type of defense and I, I faced it. And we had a huge problem to attack and we lost that game. And this was, uh, you know, immediately for me, you know, an example that how you have not only for the skills are very important because we need to learn everything. Defense is going to give us opportunity to think more about offense, how we can become better on every, because uh, number one in basketball, uh, I'm working 35 years for me. Uh, I will say the most important is uh, fundamentals, uh, basketball skills. Uh, I'm a big believer that if you improve your players, your players, 5% uh, per season, 10% per season, uh, try to imagine you have 10 players and you improve them 10%. So it's 100%. <laughs> immediately, the results are uh, amazing, immediately. Why? Because uh, uh, the number one thing that we do is, you know, we, we, we try to improve and we give goals to every player offensively and defensively for two weeks. Uh, 
the coaches, they follow and they work with three or four players and they need to improve them uh, even at the top level. Uh, when I use uh, to coach FS, for example, EuroLeague team, uh, champion of Europe, this, of EuroLeague this season. So you can uh, realize that some players, not some, many players, they have some weaknesses. They are very strong with the right hand. They cannot make passes with the left. They cannot dribble. They cannot attack strong. Big guys, they have great uh, hook shot with the right hand, but they cannot make with the left. Big guys, they cannot make passes with the left hand. And during the game, du du during the games, you realize that because they are very good, they, they trap them. So they need to make a quick pass with the left hand and they are not used to do that. So we force every player and we give goals to every player uh, for two weeks. They have to work and improve something offensively and defensively. We give one task to each player for these two weeks. And at the end of the two weeks, we check with the coaches and with everybody, of course, with uh, some... Uh, we use a lot of video sessions, very small video sessions for the team and for the players, individual video sessions, to improve their game and to show them the mistakes that we are doing offensively and defensively in these two weeks. And that's why uh, at the end of the day, when we finish the season, everybody is a better player. We need to improve our players to become better players and better characters, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we talked about preferred ball screen defense as well. So some other things we have to account for in this is let's start with the post. What are we doing in the low post then based on this strong arm defense? On the post, uh, mostly uh, to the left block that most of the players, they like to turn to the middle and use the right hook. Uh, I will say that uh, we are one step a little bit higher and uh, with the left arm, of course, up. And uh, this is exactly what uh, we were talking before. Uh, with, the left hand, uh, with the left arm up, we make deflections for the pass because they like to use the right hand to make the diagonal passes to the opposite side. Or they make a dribble and they're ready to make uh, the right hook. Uh, to the other side, actually, uh, again, we don't give the middle, but we don't curse so much because most of the players, they don't like to make uh, the left hook, to make two dribbles and make the left hook. Most of the players, the right-handed, they're going to make one or two dribbles to the middle. And again, they're going to turn to make the right hook uh, from that side. So we emphasize the left arm to be ready all the time. When we play one-on-one, -on -one, to be ready all the time uh, to contest the, the, the right hook that they have most of the players. And uh, it's easy also because with the uh, correct arm up, we make the deflections, we control all the passes, and uh, we give the opportunity to everybody to be ready to help. If we face problems, then uh, we start using trapping defense. We use uh, trapping defense from the baseline, which we prefer. Or sometimes we use uh, trapping defense from the passer, I mean, from the wing. And uh, we work a lot on that. So the other part that you've mentioned already is this, this concept of, you've talked about defending the down screen or defending the zipper screen. So how does this strong arm defense influence how you cover off the ball screens? Uh, uh, to cover everything is a little bit difficult. Of course. Uh, oh, no, but I will give you yeah. the easiest example. Easiest example. What the players, they have to think. The players, they have to think that I have to be in a position when the player will catch the ball to cover the strong hand drive, to cover, I will say, the, 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 the attack that uh, he can make immediately, you know, to, 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 to the basket. So how we teach that? We start, for example, 
to teach uh, uh, in the simplest way. There is a pass to, to the wing and the big guy is trying to screen to the opposite wing. That is the easiest way. So if the player is right-handed, it means if the ball goes to the right side and the player, the, 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 the left wing will receive the ball to the middle, what do we do? The big guy has to give space to the wing defender to pass through and to be immediately in a position of strong hand defense. When this happens to the other side, the big guy from the top pass to the left side and he goes to screen the player, the wing to the 45 from the right side. At that time, we cannot pass through because if we pass through, the moment that he is going to get the ball, he can attack immediately right and beat us. So immediately we have to be to go for contact and trail him. Trail him as a shooter, for example, and trail him behind. So we're going to be immediately ready. The moment that he's going to catch the ball, we're going to be in position not to give the right drive. So the big guy is ready. He's going a little bit more inside to cover the strong drive with the left hand. That's why I say there is a combination of the, you know, and help from all the team to the strong hand defense. So at that time, you have to trail. So once you pass through, then you trail. Two different uh, uh, kind of coverage. Why? Because we want to be ready for the strong hand defense. Of course, as we said before, if we have a different coverage on the pick and rolls, and we don't play strong hand defense because our players are not ready, and I will explain you why they will not be ready. And it will be difficult in the beginning. We play uh, assuming that we play one-on-one -on, -one on the top, in the middle. One-on-one, -on -one. ball is live, the point guard is dribbling, and we play strong hand defense. Big, big guy is coming from the, from the right elbow and trying to set a screen on the ball and give the right hand drive to, to do the, the, the ball handler. Our big, normally, if we play strong and defense on the pick and roll, doesn't stay there. He has to go to the middle or maybe one step more, not to give the left drive, and call the big guy, the small guy that pick and roll is coming. So what is doing the, the small? Doesn't give the strong hand, doesn't give the right, but the big guy is supporting. Is not, is leaving his man, is two steps below his man. And at the same time, he is protecting the rim, helping the small, watching his big guy, what he's going to do, if he's going to pop, if he's going to do something else. And this is a different coverage. If we don't play in that way, then we have to explain to the team and to everybody what we do. For example, we force to the screen and we play flat hedge, sag, whatever. And now the players, they know, even we play show hand live when the ball is live one-on-one, -on -one, when pick and roll is coming, we call right or left if we play differently. And uh, we are ready to defend the pick and roll in the way how we will like. Uh, you understand what I mean? Yep. To go back, to, to switch, maybe to switch, so we have to force to the screen, or whatever, we, we, we made decision. So uh, it's, a, it's supposed to be a long conversation to explain all these things. I know it's hard, but we give an idea and then everybody can start to think and uh, start to, to believe in some things and establish his own defense. Well, I love it, Coach. I mean, you, again, you've given so much detail and so much understanding of this system. For those that aren't as familiar with it, uh, you gave them a great overview. So I cannot thank you enough for sharing your philosophy and sharing the game with us. Thank you. Thank you very much for everything. It's very important uh, to share ideas, to share 
you know, philosophies uh, to make us think more. And every day we can learn. Every day we can add something. And this make us uh, become better coaches and uh, better persons, of course, because uh, uh, the coach needs also to inspire, you know, to, to, to show to everybody to, that he's the best example. And uh, he, he needs uh, every time to improve.